Good afternoon. Uh, you about now started actually in 1995 when I was traveling in Kenya and Tanzania on a safari. Uh, when you're on safari you see a lot of animals, zebras, wild beasts, elephants, etc. But you also meet with people, uh, people who are nice and who are very poor generally. And uh, if you want, if you're a bit curious, you can learn much more. Uh, when we reached the Mount, Meru, uh, the Mount Meru Hotel in Arusha, in Tanzania, we found that the elevator was down. We could not use the elevators. So we went to the reception and we say, how come the elevator is not working? Well, they say, we are waiting for someone to Germ from Germany, from Siemens, to come in and repair the elevators. Okay. And a few hours later, I went down to the reception and I wanted to uh, ask for um, uh, a fax that I was waiting for from my secretary and say, sorry, the uh, telephone system is down. We are waiting for someone from Alcatel, from France, to come and fix it. Uh, you don't have any technicians here to fix the uh, telephone system? They say, no, sorry, we don't have such technicians. So I could not get my faxes. So that's the type of things you find when you're traveling throughout developing countries like Tanzania, who is one of the most uh, poor countries in the world. But also there are some much more important things uh, that are uh, r r dealing with the economy. For example, this production line is producing bottles of beer. But when this production line stops and there's no one to repair it on site, it means 150,000 bottles of beer not produced because they have to wait for three days until a technician from South Africa comes and fix it. You can imagine the big loss that this is for the economy, for the company, and the big loss in profit as well. But there's more than that. If you go to visit a hospital, for example, in the corridors, you will find a medical equipment sitting there sometimes with dust on it, and it is not working, it is not being used. It's been donated by an NGO somehow, or a government organization, and it's sitting there because it failed at some certain point in time, and there was no technician to repair it. The people are just waiting for uh, the NGO to bring another one. That's it. So wherever you do, wherever you go, sorry, whatever you want to do and repair or maintain, you find a problem. There is no very often there is no local technical competences. And this is a big, big problem. So we said to ourselves, why? How come these people don't have technicians to fix those equipments, to install those equipments, to maintain those equipments? And what we found by meeting with different institutions, technical institutes, universities, etc., what we learned is that the technical education is theory-based. This means that if you go to a, a, a technical uh, institute, you'll find a teacher in the classroom saying, A, B, C, D, please repeat, kind of. And that's what they do. But there is, this is teacher-centered, but there is no training equipment in the, in the labs, no labs, no training equipment, which means in turn that they cannot do any practicals. So when they go out, of the institute, they only have a piece of paper this, that says, I have a bachelor degree in telecommunications, but they, totally, they are totally incapable of doing anything for the, for, the, for, the, for the industry. So, you know, with my good friends, after we shared a few glasses of South African wine, we found that we had the, the knowledge and we had the experience to make a big change into this to make a, a big change, a big impact on this problem. Uh, and the question came, what if we do, what if we don't? Okay, we found that if we don't, this is the solution, we go back home and that's it. And we remember about the elephants, and the lions and the others. But if we do, that was a much more tricky way to uh, do something to impact the, the situation. So we did our research. We met with government officials. We met with uh, different people in the Ministry of Education. We met with technical institutes. We met with local industries and local businesses. And out of it, we were able to kind of design a business plan, design what we call the FTE education model, which is a tailor-made 
uh, education model that is targeted to, into the, to feed the industry needs. Uh, this is made of, uh, out of hands-on practicals that are student and the, uh, with a student-centered approach opposed to the uh, teacher-centered approach. Okay, which means the important person in the classroom, in the lab, is not the teacher, it's the product, it's the student. Okay, so, and the, the students are staying with us three years, and what they get out of this, they have a recognized, nationally recognized diploma, and out of it, they, most, of, most of them, as you would see later, have, can find good jobs and good salaries and develop themselves. Now, step one was obviously as we decided to start such an institute, uh, we, buy, we bought the land, we bought 15 acres of land, 6.5 hectares, and step two was to build the buildings, uh, build the school, 1,500 square meters of, land, of buildings. Step three was to recruit and train the teachers. Well, as we've seen, the teachers were, as we, when we hired them, incapable of doing practical, so we had to train them on two things. First, being able to do the practicals in the lab, so they can in turn train the students, so we had to train the trainer program. And we also had to teach them how to be student-centered, how to focus their attention on the student. Okay, so that is the second very important thing that we had to do before, so pushing the green button. And then pushing the green button is, means we had a school in Tanzania. This is the main building. We called it KITEC for Kidimanjaro, International Institute for Telecommunications, Electronics and Computers. This institute has the most recent, most modern industry tested equipment. This means that our students, when they finish their studies with us after three years, they want the, the equipment they will find going into the industry, getting in their jobs, will be exactly the same equipment as they had been using in, uh, in our uh, institute. For each hour of theory, they have three hours of practicals training, practical trainings. We're also teaching them entrepreneurship and we're teaching them business management so they can have the option to start their own business. After three years with us, they go for an internship of three to six months within industries that we have chosen uh, to be in line with what we've been teaching them, like telecommunications, computers, networking, industry automation. And for most of them, we offer scholarships because they are coming from <coughs> very poor families and they don't have the money to pay for the tuition fees or their room or their transportation or their food or whatsoever. So we, we are sponsoring them in some ways. <coughs> and we had to find education solutions that could be sustained, that will have a long-term impact. After we leave, we want this to continue. So, instead of teaching ourselves, and then we go, nothing is left, we train the trainers. We taught for six months, we've been training the teachers themselves, so they can in turn train the students. And when we leave, they can uh, going on. It can go on. But we also have every, several times in during the year, we have uh, engineers, teachers coming from Europe, the States, coming into the Institute and they deliver new technologies, new things. So, because we want all of these to be kept up to, up to date. Okay? So, give an example. Recently, we installed, uh, we, we, we installed a new program which, is, which deals with fiber optics because there's a cable, fiber optic cable, which is now going from South Africa to Somalia. And they're going to use that, so we needed to teach, uh, to teach, to teach them uh, op fiber, uh, op fiber optic uh, equipment. Now, that was not enough, and we had to put a quality control program, very strict quality control program in place to make sure that the quality of what we are producing is best. This means continuous assessment and semester exams. This means classroom audits. This means that when every six months we have people from Europe going there and auditing the classrooms, auditing the labs, making sure that what is delivered is, is correct. And we also have individual student evaluation, which means a face-to-face evaluation. We take six of them in the lab and we give them a test and we, so we evaluate the quality of the product. The quality of our technicians is very comparable 
to what we have in Europe. Okay, so most of them are capable of going through the international examinations, like the CCNA certification, for example, which is an American standard, and they pass those exams, which means that they are really at the top. Now, so far, we have only graduated 131 <laughs> graduates. They're working in 62 African businesses, and seven of them have started their own, uh, their own companies. Their own companies. Give you an example. One has started his company installing and maintaining uh, solar equipment. This has provided solar energy, electric electricity, to villages all around Tanzania, well, large parts of Tanzania, bringing light, bringing electricity, so they can use the mobile phones, for example. They can have light at night, which was not the case. You have to know that 65% of the population of 46 million in Tanzania has no access to electricity, to energy whatsoever. 65%. So, to give you this, because this is a very important demonstration that you know, one technician can have a very large uh, ripple effect on the community. What's next? Well, as the numbers you've seen are small. 131 so far. I've graduated after three years. We have now been eight years in existence. Um, and this is not enough, clearly, for total population in East Africa. That is around 200 million. So how can we do more, was the next question we ask ourselves. We had two options. We could replicate the school itself, which means buying the land, as we've seen, constructing the buildings, hiring the teachers, etc. This takes about two years and two million dollars. So, it takes time, it takes money. We had another option, which was to replicate the model, that we, the educational model that we had developed at Keytech. So that's the solution we've chosen, because it goes much faster, it's a much faster track, only nine months, and it costs, the initial cost is much lower, in the range of two hundred thousand dollars. So 10 times less. So that's what we've chosen as the model to replicate, to scale up. We have, we've been approached by the Kenyan government, our neighbor, to do the same in Kenya. And uh, we have started a pilot project with the Kenyan government, the Ministry of Higher Education, for a pilot site that is in one of their institutes southwest of Nairobi. And this institute will start in September this year. We also have contacts in Zambia to do the same, in Burundi to do the same, and we are expecting to contact, most probably during this year, Uganda, the people in Uganda and Rwanda. We are ready now to bring quality technical education throughout East Africa and possibly beyond. As a conclusion, we believe that a skilled workforce is essential to raise a country from, from poverty. We believe that technical education plays a crucial role in driving economic development. We believe that technical education is a practical chance to participate in the middle class, and it leads to independence and a bright and optimistic future. And as the conclusion of the conclusion, after all, the world doesn't get better by chance, it gets better by change. Thank you.